Hey everybody, Christy Glass here. It's 2017. And I have to be honest with you, I have several videos already scheduled for January that I shot uh, before 2017 or more recently. I, I have tons of stuff that I shoot, but then other things sort of knock their place in line and come up. So I try to stay like relevant and sort of current events-ish with the channel. So sometimes a video on something that doesn't that isn't doesn't feel urgent gets bumped. So there's still a couple more videos with the old hair. I've been thinking a lot about the channel and what goals I have for this year and it I haven't really like spelled anything out, but I have some stuff in my brain. And one thing that I've been thinking about is making uh, some longer videos sometimes of just me, because usually the very long videos I'm interviewing someone else, but then I find myself thinking, I would like to just sort of talk about what's on my mind too. So I don't, I don't really consider this a podcast. I know many people in the knitting community call this a podcast. It's more of a YouTube channel about knitting. And so I feel like that helps me to be a little more diverse. But as part of that, I guess I'm going to include some videos now that are a little more podcast-y, if that makes sense. So starting with today, it's the beginning of January and I've been thinking about a lot of different personal knitting goals. And as part of that, I've been thinking about other time I spend doing other things. So professionally, I'm an actor, singer, model, it's like print work, uh, and baby wrangler. And I, my pie chart of earnings shifts over the years and most of my earnings from last year has been have been from baby wrangling and so I'm making this conscious effort to baby wrangle less so that my schedule is open so that I can audition more and I've just turned down my very first baby wrangling job offer of the year which is hard to do because I get a wonderful day rate and that money can go into other things I'm pursuing like my YouTube channel and providing for my children, my family, <laughs> uh, but I said no. So hopefully next week when I know that job is happening, I can make it a really productive day. So that's one thing I'm doing is I'm trying to focus on things that mean more to me, like this channel and uh, auditioning for acting jobs. My life. Okay, so here's another thing I've been thinking about. I have a lot of yarn and recently my craft room has had some damage to it, some water leakage, and I'm getting it fixed right now. And as part of getting it fixed, I had to take all of my yarn out of my cubbies and um, sort of store it away from where the construction has been happening. And I realized just how much yarn I have. I got rid of some of it. I wanted to donate it, but some of it is just not really donatable. Some of it was very, very fine, like lace weight yarn. I didn't really think it would be a practical donation item. And sometimes you just have to get rid of stuff and it felt good. It's like the beginning of the year, like let's just clean out and take stock. And so I keep saying to my family, what if I don't buy any yarn in 2017? And every single one of them just rolls their eyes and laughs at me. But I'm wondering if I could actually do it because I haven't, I haven't conquered socks yet and I have a lot of sock yarn. I bought a sweater's worth of yarn for at least three different sweaters I can think of that I still haven't started yet and I have it just sitting there. Um, I get, sometimes I get some yarn gifted to me from different yarn companies so I don't know if that will count. I don't think that counts as buying yarn. And I've also decided to attempt to become a master knitter. So the TKNA, the needle, the TKAN, the needle, what does it stand for? You know what I'm talking about. They have a, a master knitting program and it's in three sections. So the first section is supposed to take 12 months. And so I bought the package and I read it and I was immediately completely overwhelmed. Even though I feel like I know most of what's included in that uh, curriculum. And I might need to buy yarn for that because it's very specific about it has to be medium weight, natural colors, and I know I don't have like a large amount of that. So if I buy yarn for that, I'm not counting that as buying yarn because that's not like, wee, I like this, wee, wee. It's like a supply 
for a goal. I actually pulled out some yarn that I thought might work because it said it had to be natural colors or pastels. But I think this is all too fine of gauge. I don't think this is big enough. And also after reading it, it seems like when you do your first initial swatch, that's supposed to be the swatch that kind of informs the rest of the swatches, meaning it should be the same yarn for every swatch. So I think I'm gonna have to buy yarn for that, but I'm not counting that as my buying yarn, okay? So I don't think I'm gonna be able to use that after all. I have to write a report, and so I have to find books and do research and stuff, and so I, I went searching in my own library for books that I thought might, might work. Um, I'm not sure if these will, because I don't really wanna buy more books. Of course I know there's a library but I have to write a whole report. So that's really intimidating because I haven't been in college in a long time. But let me just tell you some of the things I was planning on. So this yarn I bought actually, did I buy it last year? I think I even bought it in 2015. It's this um, Imperial yarn and I got a sweater's worth because I want to make the Leavenwick Brooklyn Tweed cardigan. It's so cute. So it has these like scallops and little buttons and also buttons don't count because I like to buy buttons after the whole sweater is complete. But I love this yarn. It has like purple and pink tweed in it. So I love tweed and I love these colors. So that's one of the sweaters I want to make. Now another project that I've been so excited about really since the second I saw it is in this Noro Lace book. It's called the Drape Front Blouse and I loved it in this exact colorway. I even had to find the yarn in a couple different places because it's really like not around anymore. So I've been so excited about this drape, drape, I can't say it, drape front blouse that I got all the yarn I needed, which it's gorgeous. Look at this. It's Noro. Um, this is in Japanese, but it's gorgeous. It's like cashmere. Uh, cashmere, angora, and wool blend. And I knit up my swatch on these needles, which I just tucked in the book so I'd remember. This is 3.75 millimeters. What is that, a five? And the swatch went really well, but it's, I mean, it looks good. It's, it's lopsided because I only did, whatever, 20 stitches or whatever. And it looks great, but man, it was challenging because it's just, the whole thing is charts. And I'm not, I'm not totally accustomed to these tiny charts where I'm reading for stitches. I'm much better at reading charts for colors. So I am feeling like this is gonna be a major challenge and yet I really, really want to conquer the challenge, okay? So this is kind of like first on the docket, I think. It might be the first thing I do, but I also think it's really appropriate to wear in the spring, so maybe I'll wait till after the Leavenwick is done and then do the drape front bluffs, but that's when I really want to do. Um, so Master Knitter, Leavenwick, oh, okay. So I think everyone's talking about it. I mean, now they're starting to talk about it. I've been thinking about it forever. Remember that Prada sweater that Eddie Redmayne was wearing and you saw it in Vogue and were like, I want to make that? Yeah, me too. So I started doing some research because I don't just, you know, I'm not at that level yet. I mean, I'm, I'm getting better at knitting and crocheting, but I'm not at that level where I'm like, I know exactly how that's made. So I started doing some research on that sort of scallop look of that sweater because it's the perfect like scrap, I mean I've made the scrap gam before, but it's the perfect sweater to use all your scraps in. So one of the things I was doing while I was cleaning out my craft room is I was taking all of the scrap yarn I had and organizing it into natural fibers and acrylic because I think the acrylic scraps are great to have in one place for when I want to yarn bomb something or when I want to just make an amigurumi something like I just need a little bit. So I put those in one spot and then my natural fiber yarns I put in another spot because they're more expensive, they're finer. If I'm going to make something out of that I want to know that the whole thing needs to be hand washed versus not. And I was thinking that pile of scraps would be great for this attempt of the Eddie Redmayne we're calling it that because he models it a lot, but other people model it too, Prada sweater. And so as I was researching, I found this lady, I think her name's Debbie, 
I will I will link down below what her actual name is. And she was talking about the scallop pattern and I, I liked watching her video about it, but they were a little bit big and then I kept researching like scallops or um, there was another keyword I was, I was using, but I ended up finding this cowl called the Sea of Scallops. Um, it says scallops created by short rows and alternating colors create a dimension in a sweet shoulder warmer. And here's a picture of it. And it was only available in this book, 60 Quick Cowls. And I thought that turned inside out is what that sweater is made of. So I got this so that I could sort of play with the pattern and see if I could figure it out, just like everyone else is trying to figure out. There's this one Instagram account where she's, um, and I'll link that down below too. I can never remember anything when I'm on camera because it just, that's the way it goes. But she's showing how people are attempting to make it happen. I know there's a whole post I read about it on Mason Dixon. And so um, people are trying to figure it out, but they're being very like secretive. Like they won't tell you exactly how they knit that, which I guess I understand because it's someone's original design. But at the same time, it's like, we're all trying to figure it out. Help the sister out. Okay, so lastly, my first finished object of 2017 is going to be the Penguano. Now, I'm feeling a little bit, what am I feeling? I'm feeling like, really? Like, this thing is becoming a beast, like a creature of its own. I knew it was gonna be big and weird, but I'm even though I'm using the exact same needles for every yarn, the yarns have different weights, and it's, I don't know if it's working out. I don't know, because look at this thing. Okay, I'm on the left side right now. Okay, I've just done the increase here. But look at, okay, this is the wrong side. Let me show you the right side. Look at this, look at this beast. It's like a blanket scarf, but it gets so twisty while I work on it that I ha I'm constantly having to untwist it. Here's my knit collage here. Here's my, this is Wonderland yarn right here. This is something, this is a mix of stuff. Look at this thing. This is the very back panel. Okay, back panel. And then here is the right side. Look at this. It just goes on and on forever. Here's some tweed that my friend brought me back from Ireland. I, I used the whole skein because I held it five strands at a time. And maybe that's too thick because look at this one. And then the same panel on this side is this one. So I just, or is it? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, these are not the same size. I mean, you can stretch it a little, a lot, and this doesn't stretch as much, but I'm just a little worried. Okay, now here's the, the slant front decrease situation. And my numbers are off, so I don't know if I missed decreases. I'm looking at it and it looks like I didn't, but it was like at the end of 34 rows, you'll have 31 over here. No, I did not have 31. I kept going a little more and I have 34 as a compromise. And I'm just like, well, I'll just remember that for the other side and make sure they're the same. But look how giant this thing is. It is giant. It fills my whole, I mean, this is the top of the shoulder. And this is already, like, almost to my hips. And I already know, and there's a border here, and there's a border box. I don't, guys, I don't know if I totally messed this thing up. I want it to be huge and ridiculous. I really do. But this, knitting this thing is getting ridiculous. Like, this is, like, way longer than my, even my wingspan. Look at this. Look. I can't, it doesn't even fit in the camera. So I, I, I now I just want to get it done. And I hope that it's fabulous and I don't have to frog the whole thing and that I love it. I hope I don't feel like it was a waste of time and a waste of yarn, but I'm kind of there right now. So I'm not starting the new year off in the best place with my project because I just want to get over with and get on to other cool things. Um, let me show you some of the sock yarn I have because I, it's inspiring me to hopefully just finally make some socks already. Would you like to say hello? Hey. And this is my daughter. Are you gonna learn to knit? Whoa! Are you gonna learn to knit someday? We learned about clothes at school. And I was thinking about, I've seen a lot of the hashtags of find your fade, that find your fade shawl, and I was thinking about that, but then I kept trying to put together my favorite sock yarns and they just weren't telling the story I wanted them to hey, tell. Boy. So I was like, I'm not going to do the find your fade shawl. I'm not going to do it. Plus, all that sock yarn, that's so many stitches. Like, so many stitches. And I'm not like completely 100% a shawl person, you know, just yet. So I thought, um, there is one really cool shawl I just saw on the Ravelry homepage that I'm considering doing with my neighborhood um, yarn that I finally got. I finally bought some neighborhood. 
Isn't it gorgeous? So I think maybe this with one of my woolen binds might be good. Um, like these might be nice together for that shawl. I'll show you, I'll tell you what it's called down below because again, can't really remember. But here, hold that up. But look at all this great sock yarn I have. I have this blue, I have this one that someone gave me. I think this would be a great pair of socks. Yeah, hold that up. This one that I got at Woolen recently. And then I have a couple Woolen Wein, Woolen Wein yarns. Look at these. So this might, this might, might be the year of the sock. We'll find out. Yeah, these, these two are very similar. You can tell I'm you can tell I am who I am because I'm drawn to the same thing. These, was good. These were all going to go together. So anyway, that's my check-in. That's my New Year's resolution, my New Year's goals, my New Year's planning. That's what I'm thinking about. These projects have got to get me through to a certain point. So I think, you know, I can think of it in two ways. I can think of it as, one, I'm not buying yarn in 2017. Or I could think of it as, I'm not buying yarn until these, these particular projects are complete. Though I do have this giant letter G on my fireplace that I want to yarn bomb, so that could be another project that I already know I have yarn for, that I could work on after that. I have yarn bombing I really want to do, which takes up my time. And I could make some more of my Scraptacular cows for charity, because the Love Scarf Project is collecting here in February, uh, Valentine's Day, so I could put throw some of those together to donate. And then again, the Master Knitting is going to take up my time. So tell me what is your plan like how do you plan for the new year like this is the first time i'm really thinking about it because last year i don't remember feeling this feeling of like of like i need to plan my year but since i know now that like sometimes jobs take up my time or ideas i have like yarn bombs or gifts i want to give for christmas and stuff like that throws me off that I think it is good to have a little bit of a plan ahead of time. So I'm going to stop talking now. Happy New Year. Uh, thanks as always for checking in on the channel. I have one, two, three, four, five, like five interviews already scheduled for this year, all of which I'm really thrilled about. Um, so they'll roll out eventually. And um, I've reached out to more people who I haven't heard back from yet, but really hoping that those turn out to and if you guys have any questions for me or whatever like I would be happy to do a Q&A on here um, just let me know down below or on Instagram or Twitter or whatever okay so thanks again for checking in to my like extra long video today uh, about the new year and what I have planned and I will see y'all later bye oh my gosh you guys I have a couple PS's because you can probably tell from the editing, but my daughter was being very uncooperative during that whole thing. And so my mind got off track. But first of all, in my gifts for knitters, I mentioned having a floor lamp, and I have not bought that. But look what else I thought of. A neck lamp. And they actually exist. And this is so cool because it goes together to make a heart. Like a little heart. Maybe it's one-handed. They close up to make, okay, they, they close flush to make a little heart. Then they open up and they're a lamp, only mine came broken. This is broken, you can actually see a crack in it. So I'm going to return it, but I haven't returned it just yet. But it works. I tried even with one side, it still works. I tried it last night, my husband went to bed early, I was like watching something on my laptop in bed and I could still knit with this lamp. And you like touch it and it comes on, I haven't figured it out yet. But anyway, so that's one thing. And the, oh here it's on. The other thing is, I know I talked about having Knit Miss with Sydney Squiddy Knits, and the day we were supposed to do it, I got the stomach flu, and it was her last day in town, because we waited to the very last minute to do it so that no surprises were ruined. And so I was so depressed, but good news is, we've decided to do a belated Knit Miss Christmas episode. So we're gonna do it in late January. Who cares, we can break the rules. We can have Christmas in February, it's fine. So. Get excited for that because it's still on, just a little bit belated, all right? So that's my PS for today. I'm sorry. Normally I try to tape when she's at school, but I just had this brainstorm. I wanted to do it right then. I thought she was occupied. She wasn't, blah, blah, blah. Family life. Love it. All right. See you later. Bye. <laughs>